My name is Mario Chavez. I work for a development shop. You have them all Mexico. working. The name of the company Struggles is Michelada.io. And what I'm going to talk today it's on the screen. is Ruby about uh, uh, rediscovering Instead. Active Record. Um, so uh, those are probably the that you're running we with. are all familiar with Active Record. Um, when I came to yeah, Rails kind of creeping up like, and, and uh, eight years ago, to, the first thing know, that, I, to, that I hear from the people is what was that uh, Active um, Record was magic. So let's get started. Like, uh, we I mean, just what are Rails uh, create or define a class out how and, I started. Uh, that's pretty business. much what we needed uh, in order to make it work professionally uh, about two years ago. The database. And but uh, pretty much over the time, uh, I just find out that uh, on any actually there is there is no magic um, in Active Record. I mean, Active Record is doing pretty cool things and for I didn't us. Want to write the, for it's every hiding a lot of the complexity uh, and so that implies to have a model be uh, connected to a table in the database, open up the but at the end, there is, there is no magic at all. And what I'm trying to do here in this talk is just to do some uh, exploration and go to the uh, main um, actions that Active Records is doing for us in order to transform a query into an object. So let's start with that. That provide uh, function. Probably we, we are all familiar with this with this line of code. It has like a Russian uh, doll, right? We are basically just uh, an app with an app. Uh, using uh, a generator in order to create a definition. Uh, but uh, to get the core what we like are going to end up is something like this. Again, it's I like just to start with this instead. Uh, it doesn't and, have anything But you build in gems, access but to still, auto loading magic, and the full rails. If I open up the console, right, I can run this 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 query way, where I'm asking uh, Active Record to go to the database. you're wondering, you know. And pull useful. one of the records right. with the ID one. Well, and absolutely. what we see below you, is, is the actual I've, response uh, that we you probably work with the tools may be expecting. On the screen. In this case, I have an ID, have I have divide. a name, an email address, and obviously we're going to have the graded and give you like a nice, uh, time uh, a nice UI for dealing the uh, with here standard cross operations. How uh, you have how on the top record, record you have doing this? How uh, can Active Record come nice. from this? into being uh, able to execute you, my you, you query. These what is, what is doing how they're underneath. doing all their magic and reading so points and views. So the first thing so that we need like to understand is that um, Active Record needs to do some kind of uh, introspection. How and with this introspection, the first uh, thing the that Active Record needs to, to perform for is for bootstrap to coffee, ask the database uh, what is the which, table schema. General Once that we have this table pipeline. schema, then we um, can we're do not gonna get into uh, a, lo a lot okay. of things. So the first standard time thing to do that we uh, load JavaScript or CSS, a model in our application, and we try to do what you're distributing. Uh, any so, kind of operations uh, like a query, really useful. the first thing that is going to happen is that uh, Active in, Record is going to try to load this, this, to this schema. Totally Basically, what it's doing, it's calling this method. If we fire up the Rails console, known as we the just configure some model and call uh, these attribute types. What we are gonna I wanna try to break find out is that this method step. it's gonna fire something uh, inside of the active record code, which is called load okay. schema. No, we cannot build a Rails application. This this method is is delegating the, the call to the actual connection, to the yes. actual database connection. Okay. To Ask we, that's what right. is the schema for Can this the specific model. Real applications that models not here. The connection hard, right? is laying on, on the you. schema cache, you know, API, so it means you know, that every time, um, or at least the first time that we try to use a model, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay. Active Record is gonna go in we there, Rails pull the table schema, uh, made a copy of that, cache it, and leave it ready for no. us for the next calls to these models. So okay. it means that only the first Couple. time for each model, way, we're gonna make this, vote this, as, you know, this kind of call. Like a game, like he's, also, that, like, this means that the connection is keeping you know, feel, uh, feel your, a your hash. Right? Who says and we can this hash, Sorry, we it contains uh, without you. all the attributes, or all the schema for this specific model. And we can see, for we example, in this, in, in this piece of code, uh, so we are example, uh, expecting, um, we're asking the hash to I mean, give us the schema director. for a specific yep. table. If there is nothing in there, Jason, not too that's bad. where uh, the connection actually issue a query 
to the database. It will depend uh, on, on each database uh, uh, how the um, query is going to so look like. Um, but at the end, we're going to get uh, all the information that we need to understand you could argue that at string what is uh, the schema for our model. Uh, say it is not. So yeah, we can, so we can build a Rails application. What we are getting, uh, if, we, if we call directly the schema uh, cache, column hash, for example, for the table user, we're going to get this, this okay. specific hash. We have uh, the keys are going to be the, the, okay. the columns there. of the table. People are, and yeah, we can uh, totally the do value, it. it's going to be an object that it's more cautious it's going to have a lot of information. But probably it's some Ow. of the uh, most important piece of data that we are uh, getting here is the, the attribute type. But, we can um, see here that uh, the database we're gonna build a Rails application is uh, an integer. But also we're going to have like uh, default values and, and any other important uh, information that we can use inside of uh, Active Record. Now that we have this, this understanding, the loaded schema Rails method, app, uh, method also needs to uh, like give us a little oh, sorry. more uh, information for um, the we're gonna just move this over to the Basically, other what we now. are going to need is uh, going to need a cast type. Mean? And a cast type is something that will allow us to convert uh, whatever uh, the database is telling us that it's going to be the, 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 uh, the data type that we are storing in the database. And, and what the data type is going to become on the Ruby side. Obviously, for, for integer, probably this is, this is pretty simple. I mean, if we have a number, we're going to have, like uh, if we have an integer in the database, probably we're going to have an integer on the, on the Ruby side. But for things like, uh, for example, timestamps, nice uh, this is, uh, is going to be a different right. story. We're going to need no something there. that will help us to make the cast we're gonna between open up our the original data type into okay. a Ruby type. And here's what I'm going to do. What is happening inside of Active uh, Record today, is that it does four. implement this Active Model Type value. This is this gonna, is a base we're going class to say, that right, usually uh, here's where we would, we would put like a string, right? A you know, controller and action. How, uh, we're just going to do Active Record is going to make this casting between database types and into into, into Ruby well. types. If uh, we inspect right. uh, the uh, Active Record source so, code, we're going to find out that we have Active server. Model Type integer, Active Model Type string, Active Model Type uh, date and, and and some other uh, uh, objects that will help us okay. to create this. Here's our first this, error. This cast. And this is something new up, in uh, in For Rails five. Given well, one actually, it, zero. it is implemented in Rails. Uh, so 4. it looks like it actually called but our lambda. But the API is, is private. It's, it's not available uh, for us. But in Rails five, we can actually so. uh, create our own types. Like, uh, for example, imagine that we have uh, a field in the database where we are storing uh, an H, H store data in there, and then we want to pull that data into a, a race application, oh, so here's but a more instead of error. getting a hash, uh, we wanted to uh, convert that into body some being... sort of uh, object. And this object doesn't really need to be an active uh, model object. It, it can be pretty much everything, or probably we, we can convert that into an extract or something like that. So we can actually define our own uh, data types right. for, for Rails. Um, and the way that we can, we can do that is uh, that we need to implement at least uh, three methods on this from this type of uh, right? class. The first one is, is the serialize. Equals this is the method element, that right? we are going to tell find, uh, second, Rails find. or Active Record how we are going to so we're gonna uh, set that up right transform now. whatever we are getting from the database into uh, a Ruby it's object. When the screen's not right in front of you. The second one is cast. This one is being used for uh, user input. So, for example, let's say that like we a nice have a form, and in the like form, 200s. we have uh, an, empty, an input field. Uh, hash, and this input field we'll say, uh, can accept a number. World. When the form posts that information back to, to Rails, okay. we need uh, a way to uh, get okay. the number Different and error. convert it, so into, it looks the, like, into the final uh, type that is going to be stored in the, in the database. And finally, so we need to implement the serialize uh, method. The serialize well, method is going to uh, dictate array, how the Ruby type uh, data is going to be transformed into uh, the, database, the, the database type. So as I say, this is part of the attributes uh, API. Without using so the model at this point, now that we cool. were able to pull the database schema. Um, now, I just want to do one more uh, thing, which will we, hopefully be uh, provide uh, of a interest. casting type because it's still pretty record. boring. It's just serving a, a static model string. Will be able I want to look at that, what's that ENV that's what being is, passed uh, in. 
its own so uh, schema. I'm going to turn that into if JSON. we call these attributes types, we can see here uh, the, the, the response. So look at that. So here is what the now? Ruby that's being so we, into, we know that we can uh, understand the schema, list. but we cannot okay. st oh, uh, still get to this point where, where we about, can actually run uh, the query. The HTTP request, right? You see the actual request URI. The next thing URI, that we, or that the active record path, uh, needs to perform um, is to you know, create a down, uh, query see, for us. Like here is like the cookie information. Uh, active record okay. is smart enough to okay. try to and the question is, how does that work? cache uh, query objects for us. Let, let me explain why. Find my mouse. There we go. Uh, when we execute a query, so for example, the, this dot find and the number, rack, what it's going to uh, do, it's going to try to find problem. if that and statement has been now. executed before. Provides an interface between if, if it is, Ruby. obviously, uh, we are going to just pull okay, that just, query and we are going to perform whatever uh, action it needs to be done. But it. if not, then. No. Uh, or find method, it's going to be converted into uh, a word. Sorry, it, it takes query. an environment hash. So we can see here in, in, the, in the block, that's that's the query. The that's how the find hash of headers, dot find number and or dot find ID is being converted okay. into, well, which might look into a, little a bit query. Cool. This is basically but just there is something here that uh, of we need to, to to pay attention is that in the where clause, right. um, so instead of passing the ID of the object that I'm looking that for. Uh, Rails or file, Active Record is doing something params.bind. And we're going to see what, what it means in, in, in a minute. It's taking a list of So we don't match. have the query. Routes. And it means uh, that we're going to have to, to create Apple. a new one. If we go to the statement cache uh, file, we're going to have find this, this, this method. And this is this is the part they, they that uh, takes care of uh, creating the query for you know, us. All the cool stuff, like when you say render, the first thing you're basically that telling we it, okay, when you are going to need is to convert the Here's how to dot where into RLs um, AST. And that's what the first line sugar. of the create method is doing. This block.call is actually application executing the where clause that we, that we, that we see before. But the point and this is, where clause is being converted into this uh, RL um, tree where we have this node, which is quality. Yeah, okay. Right. We have uh, the attribute, Location. which is the attribute ID. And then on the right side, we have something called uh, bind param. Uh, this is kind of a, a placeholder where maybe we're going to uh, replace that with the ID of the object that we are looking for. And actually, if we see the other structure that we have on the left, uh, we see at the end uh, that we have a block which uh, reference to the ID. But instead of uh, saying that it's an integer or, or, or displaying the value, what it's actually saying is that this is a substitute. Substitute. This is something that we are going to replace uh, at some point. The next part that we need to, or that the create method is doing so here, what is when I try uh, to it's creating this. a bind map. The bind map is uh, basically uh, setting up what are the params that we are going to pass okay. to the to the query. Same, right? uh, the first one on, on, on the right is it's, it's uh, the value for the limit clause because we are doing so dot find when you see it, just, and we are actually call. asking for just one record. And uh, the yep. one on the left is uh, the definition right. just for the for the so query when attribute. We go to in slash this case, foo, is the ID field. The info is slash of foo, as you expect. You go to slash now the I'll next thing that thing. Uh, it's going to happen Add here to is URL. that uh, we're going to create this, this query builder so of the uh, RL right. AST. And Especially this is what actually is going to construct kind of the SQL for us. Of In this case, the, it is using the a specific um, uh, uh, database adapter uh, in order to create the right query for the right uh, database. So in my case, I was using Postgres. If we were using MySQL or something else, the query probably will be a, a little bit uh, different. But here, what we can see in the query that uh, this query builder is, is, is screening for us is that the ID and the limit has these uh, question marks, which means that uh, those are placeholders that we're going to replace at some point. And doing this will allow us also to cache the query on the rail size, sure. but also we are going to keep the chance interface. on the database which to, means cache the, uh, to, cache, uh, to cache the query, sure. the, action, uh, the execution plan for the query in the database. So yes. Uh, you can have any kind of rack. So yes, you, you made up uh, with me up to this point. We, we uh, well, the model knows what is the schema, 
psychic, we know, the psychic uh, web. That uh, we needed to build a, a query. A web we interface. Query. So what is next? Is We're almost in Sinatra. There. So but if you are running Sinatra, still not there. Many of you are. You are uh, actually at this running. this point, we are ready to Apps execute the query. Um, okay. What is this going is to happen is that documents. now that we have the statement, Ebb. we're going to be Ebb. able to call this method execute. Okay. And the method execute, as you can see, one of the params is the actual ID that we are trying to, you can mount to uh, for the record that we are trying to pull from the database. And well, we also pass in the, the, the connection. The execute right. method will do a couple things here. The first step, it's going to okay. actually perform the binds. Relevant. Do you remember Relevant that uh, in, in the previous steps, we have a bind map, and we have uh, two attributes in there. The first one was Rails for the limit clause, and the second one was for the ID. But at that point, uh, the ID was marked as, as a substitute. At this point, we are actually um, replacing the substitute. Uh, um, Replacing the value with the real ID of the record that we are trying to pull here. Rails engine. So what's the then, um, Rails what we are, are asking, and, and this step is to actually give us the SQL statement, the string that we are going to send engine. to the database. We see that we still have the, the, the placeholders. Um, what are Rails engines then? And once that we are ready, uh, what Active Record is going to do is just execute this find by SQL where we are actually going to pass the SQL query, the bind values, which are the values that at the end are going to be uh, sent to the database for our query. And um, what we are going to get is, uh, at some point, is a result set. This uh, result set, it's going to be something like this. It's just an object that has uh, the columns and the rows. And for the rows, it's, it's an array of, of arrays. So on the last step, what we are going to perform is we're going to uh, execute a map we're of this result set. And okay. the instantiate method is the one that is going to create the instances for each, for, for world each one of the records that we are pulling off rather the rather database. Than, you know, kind of, but would feel too distant from reality. It's to feel like we know you might want so like this. So let's, let's the instantiate to method does uh, a few okay, so things. The first thing is, is that uh, it needs uh, to allocate the object, like uh, actually create the object of the user uh, model. And then it needs to uh, initialize the attributes. And this is, this is an important uh, step. Actually, the code for uh, initializing the attributes is the one that you're seeing here. The first thing that we, that Active Record needs to perform is to Define all the accessors order. and the helper methods for the a pain. Like, uh, for example, this is the first time that we use this model. So it doesn't have like a dot name or dot email. And this is, this is where and those methods are going to be defined. A, a, inside of the model, there is a flag that says if uh, all the attributes have uh, been initialized or not. It, if not, then uh, there is something that runs and create all well, these, these methods survey. and all the query methods survey. also. Um, the logic for this is, if you want to look into the source code, okay. is the attribute methods. So um, actually, okay. the logic is, is, more complex is, form is using, very, uh, in an very extensive, and that probably it needs uh, a talk more. by its own, because okay. it's, it's, uh, Active Record is performing a lot a of work in there. But anyhow, now that we have all the attributes, the next thing uh, that we need to set for the model is, is, is to create this lazy attribute okay. hash. This lazy attribute hash is uh, every time that we call like a user dot attributes, uh, actually we are delegating the, that call into, into this uh, class. Basic setup. And this class so is the one that knows uh, the right what, the, what is the data that our model is, is, is containing or that, it, the, or that uh, the, our object is holding on. It's fine, don't worry about it. If um, we so inspect we'll this that. lazy attribute we'll hash, how, we're going to find out that it has uh, uh, two main variables here. The first one is the types. Do you remember at some point uh, I told you that uh, once that we get the schema, we need a cast type, and this cast type is uh, so uh, the way that we're allowed to convert the data from the database um, into a Ruby type. So here we have uh, this hash where this we regard. can see uh, each of the attributes what is, what is the cast type that is going to be used? And also we have the values. 
the values is where we are actually holding the data as, as it comes from the database. There is, there is no transformation here. There is nothing uh, that we haven't uh, made to the data yet. It's, it's just the raw data that we get from, from the database. The name of the of this class, lazy attribute hash, is is uh, it, it it has a meaning okay. because we'll work on that. let's say that our model has uh, ten attributes and cool. and we do user dot find one and we get the model. So if we if we wanted to cast all the data for the ten attributes, just as soon as we get the data. Uh, Obviously, we're going to spend time over there just doing the casting in order to prepare the data to be, to be used by, by us. But, uh, for example, what uh, Lazy Attribute Hash is, is doing is that it is delaying that. If we just do user dot find and number one, we're going to get the, the model, but no casting is going to be performed until we do something like a user dot name and we try to pull the name, then that's when the lazy attribute hash is okay, going to do the, it's going to perform the casting. Uh, this, is, this is the same for, for the rest of the, of the attributes. So once that we do something like a, a user.id, as you can see, there is another variable inside of the lazy attribute hash, which is the delegate um, hash. And this one okay. is actually so containing the value that it comes uh, as a raw value the from project. the database and the um, final value create, as it was uh, uh, casted. For example, if, if this were the example of, uh, of the uh, timestamp, we were going to see on the value before cast that it was just a string, and the, so I, the value will be the actual Ruby type that represents the data. Things go wrong because they, during So, you, yes, it's, it's working lazy. Uh, so finally, uh, after going through all these hoops, uh, Active okay. Record was, kind of was able to cool perform um, the query that I asked for, and I got the, uh, the, the expected yeah, result. So as you can see, so there is a lot of work uh, um, that is involved dash dash mountable flag in, in, at the end order of the first to line, turns it go into from uh, an just engine. class user declaration to create. actually having active record uh, perform so uh, something for us. Um, so what we, what we learned here is the first thing, again, is that there is no magic. Uh, what Active Record is doing actually a, a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Um, obviously, what I what I show you here were were mostly the highlights, but uh, following the code is is not that hard. This is actually it's actually pretty pretty easy uh, to just pick up one of the query and try to follow uh, up, uh, whatever Active Record is doing. Um, uh, underneath. Another thing that I learned what I what I was doing this is that Active Record is going to try to cache and be as lazy as possible. Every time that we uh, work with the models, if there is uh, a work that it doesn't need to be no, performed, no. Just, like just from right that parent directory, you're gonna, uh, and it's going to fill Active Record is going to just um, put in a hole yeah, and then right do something else until we actually require that. And if there is a chance for Active Record to actually cache whatever we are doing uh, okay, in, into the different operations, then uh, Active Record is going to try to, to, to cache that information for us. And well, as I said, uh, following the code is, is, not, is not that hard. Um, we, we don't really need to, to go deep into understanding uh, how all the things work in the framework. But obviously, uh, I mean, we, we need to have some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, curiosity uh, with the tools uh, that we use, kind of use every day, a walkthrough just to, to get a probably kind of, you know, uh, when, you, when you create a, a great engine, idea on, on what's there. what is what is on, what, what is going on, how how things work. Uh, I I got interested in this because uh, I was writing a, a blog post uh, probably two weeks before the first beta one of uh, Rails five. Uh, uh, hits. So I was going through all the different uh, pull requests on, on, on GitHub, and I find out a lot of things uh, that were happening inside of uh, Active Record. And that's how I just started off with uh, curiosity to see what is happening inside of Active Record every time that we run that we run a query. Okay. So so the first thing that you'll notice it for me. Um, uh, it feels like a thank you. 
exciting for a gem. Of course, it is a gem. We do have our gem spec. Uh, so this is kind of like the... I don't know if you have any, any questions. Um, Rails, yeah. The idea of Rails engines is that you for other places. Um, there we go. Um, oh, and sorry, one, one more thing to mention about that gem spec, kind of important. Uh, well, uh, you're there's, your there is... Uh, ...with gems. Oh, yes. If, if there is any, any other resources um, other than just uh, going directly to the code, if uh, you want to learn or to understand uh, what is going with, uh, with Active Record, um, sure, um, there, is, there is an IRC. There are uh, Google Groups. Also, going directly to, to the GitHub. Um, and we're going to be working yes. with the gem spec as we go on. Uh, if you look in lib, back, and everything's going to be named as a module, which is why you have back there. Everything in this engine is going to be namespaced, and, and we'll see how that plays. Um, and before there's an Rails engine, that's, that's the thing that tells Rails, like, hey, treat this as an engine. Uh, there's wraps.rb, which you'll see it's not on a Rails is in your engine, right? We we had our lambda. Uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, I I never been in that in that call, specific right? uh, but, uh, situation. When uh, is a request? It be yeah, sorry. Level like I app, I'm like my own app. That's the rest. Okay. Um, so we're going to work with the file Thank a lot. Thank you. Uh, in our in the app property.